Here you have a topping HS01. And what in the world does a topping HS01 do? Well, the point of this thing is primarily to deal with ground loops when you're hooking uh, your computer or USB streamer up to your DAC. Uh, I not, don't believe it actually does any a cleanup of the signal beyond that. I think primarily it's a ground loop. Uh, and I have found that it did help in a couple of instances where I, I noticed it, it just seemed a little bit noisy. Uh, and I put this in and it just seemed to clean it up a little bit. But for the most part, when I put this device in, it doesn't make a huge difference. You'll notice that uh, as most DACs tend to expect, you've got a USB-B connector here uh, and then a USB-A to pretend that it's passing it on to the DAC itself and you can actually if, if, you're, if you're connecting to something that needs a lot of power uh, you can hook up an additional power supply to this USB-C connector uh, but in most cases uh, you're not going to need that if you're just passing it through to a DAC and as I say uh, I've only had it help a little bit in a couple of spots because its primary purpose is to improve ground loops. Uh, I just got another device today and uh, I'm curious to see how it does in terms of its job. Sound is science. Oh gosh. There you go. Quite a nice um, slogan there. It's JDS Labs and it is the Synapse. And the Synapse you'd think functionally is doing almost the same thing but supposedly it does a whole lot more. Let's just get it open here. Look at that. Berries are empty. Ha! Huh. <laughs> this is what I get for doing it on my kitchen counter. There you go. So we have some little adapters. We have a little USB-C to USB-C cable because this device only does USB-C. So you've got that little cable to give with you. It's a beautiful red color. And this particular one is the cast aluminum container. Uh, they also have a slightly cheaper one, I think for $10 less, uh, they will give you one with a uh, 3D printed plastic container they use instead. But uh, this one looks slick, and for an extra ten dollars, I figured why not get the fancy schmancy shiny one. So oh, there you go. And speaking of shiny, you'll see it keeps reflecting the light off my ceiling there. The difference between these two devices is that this thing has a brand new chip in it from I believe it's Texas Instruments, and from what I understand, it's about a fifty dollar chip or something. And the purpose of that chip is to be an all in one galvanic isolator for USB signals. So it, of course, would solve ground loops, much like the topping would. Uh, it would get rid of the dirty power, uh, which is being sent in from the computer and trying to signal the DAC that there is actually something connected. That's the problem with USB. With USB, when you plug something in, the, th the source device, your streamer or computer, has to send a power voltage through to the DAC to say, hey, I'm actually hooked up to you. Uh, and without that, USB just does not work. And that's why with this device, uh, just by hooking it up, it, it, a lot of the noise can be on the ground. So just by eliminating the ground, that can help a lot of times. Uh, or by plugging in a, an alternative power, uh, that makes a difference as well. Uh, with this device, it completely disconnects the power from the, the, the sender and, uh, and uh, sends it through to the other side, but I believe it retransmits the signal as well, because as I say, it's, it's full galvanic isolation, which oftentimes can be quite expensive to build, which is why not all DACs have galvanic isolation. I suspect that now that, you know, there's a fairly inexpensive chip, that most, you know, non-cheap uh, DACs will probably start showing up with galvanic isolation a lot more often. Uh, by being able to use this chip. But this device just has it built in. And curiously enough, these two devices cost about the same amount of money. So uh, this new chip uh, certainly has a lot of functionality for a very low price. So as I say, I've not had a chance to listen to it yet, but I am curious because one of the things that I have uh, is a Denifrips Gaia. It's a digital to digital converter. And, and one of the benefits of that is it'll take the USB in like this does, but then it fully reclocks it and sends it back down the chain. Uh, not as USB though, it sends it down as, uh, as either I2S or AES EBU or SPDIF or whatever you happen to want. Uh, but I wonder 
With this device simply retransmitting it and then providing full galvanic isolation, I wonder how close it could get as far as the benefits that the uh, Gaia gives uh, to the system. So uh, I'm gonna do a direct head-to-head -head at some point between it and, and uh, between this thing and the Gaia. I don't think there's any point in comparing it to this one because as I say, this is a hit and miss thing. If you've got a problem that it can solve, then it can solve it. But all the problems that you could potentially have uh, don't get solved uh, with this little device. But this solves a whole lot more with the galvanic isolation. Really just eliminates the possibility of your noisy PC and its noisy power supply from having any impact whatsoever downstream. And that's good enough for now. Have yourself a great evening. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of insight into this device. And I will post another video later if I discover that it's better than sliced bread and can actually do wonderful, wonderful things to your sound. And if it doesn't do anything useful at all, or if I'm just too busy, you may not see a video on it later. Anyway, hope you're having a good evening. Bye-bye.